approaching Sydney, Australia. Sydney is the capital of New South Wales. And in a matter of days after leaving England by air, you can look down on its harbour. It's a fine introduction to Australia. Americans will tell you that the city looks like San Francisco. But as soon as you land, you realize how British it is. There are plenty of tall buildings, but they limit them to 150 feet to let the sun and the air into the streets. One thing you notice about Australian cities is their parks and monuments. The big cities are full of them, and even the smallest country town has its Anzac Memorial in memory of the men who died in the war of 1914-18. Some of the monuments date back quite a bit. There's one in Macquarie Place, Sydney, which was put up in 1818. From it, they measured the public roads leading to the interior. You can't be long in Australia without finding the beaches. They're known all over the world for their surf and their white sand, and they stretch almost all the way around the continent. And that means 12,000 miles of coastline. There are some very good ones close to Sydney. One way to see the beaches is to go to Sublime Point, 40 miles south of Sydney. From the summit, you can see them stretching for miles in either direction. At Kayama nearby, there is a natural freak. The blowhole, as it's called, is caused by the long wash of the Pacific coming up through the rocks. Just in from the coast is the Great Dividing Range, separating the coastal strip from the western plains. 150 years ago, the early explorers were trying to find a way to the interior, and these mountains were a formidable obstacle. But today, they're a national playground. The slopes are covered with eucalyptus trees, gums they call them in Australia. The gum trees you find in other parts of the world, like the Near East and Southern California, came originally from Australia. The early settlers found that water was a problem and they did what they could to conserve the supply. hold back the waters of the main rivers, like the Murray and the Murrumbidgee, providing irrigation for large areas of the surrounding country. And with the settlers came the sheep. Now there are 120 million of them in a good season, cropping the grass of the inland, 16 times as many sheep as there are people in the country. The aristocrat of them all is the proud Merino. Shearing a 5,000 guinea champion ram is an expert's job. They don't try any 70-second records on him. Look at the length and quality of that fleece. They 
They sowed wheat too, these tough settlers of the inland. 18 million acres of it on the western plains and other inland areas. It's good wheat and millers the world over buy Australian grain. Besides sheep, Australians breed a lot of cattle. More than 14 million they counted last muster. Almost 5 million of them dairy cows. And wherever you go, you see the gum trees, one of the hardest woods in the world. So tough, it's almost indestructible. Now don't get the idea that Australia is just an agricultural country. It's highly industrialized too. They mine all the useful minerals, such as coal, iron, lead, tin, copper, zinc, and silver. Since 1883, Broken Hill alone has earned 210 million pounds from its silver lead deposits. Newcastle, on the coast of New South Wales, is a steel town. Here they refine iron ore from South Australia. They make good steel, as cheap as any in the world, and maintain high wages at the same time. This cheap steel has been the foundation of Australia's industrial development. Half of what Australia grows is sold abroad. In the harbours of her big coastal cities, wheat, fruit, meat, wool, dairy produce and metal are loaded for foreign ports. But it's not all work and no play. Australia is a great country for sport. Almost every town has a race course and you can win or lose a fortune with the books, or put a modest five shillings on the tote. Of course, it doesn't often freeze on the coast, but in winter, the Australian Alps have more square miles under snow than Switzerland. Everyone you meet in this country seems to be a fisherman, and no wonder. They have some of the finest sporting fish in the world. And if you get tired of fishing, there are the sailboats. 18-footers, they call them. They're amazing little craft. They carry eight men and as much as 1,800 square feet of canvas. always come back to the beaches, and there's good reason for it. On the beaches, you meet the typical Australian. He lives outdoors most of the year, a husky, laughing sun worshipper. energy of these vigorous young men plunging through the surf is symbolic of the spirit of Australia, a nation with vitality, a people with a future. <laughs> 